We return to part two of our overview of the Impressionist uh, and the Impressionist shows. Uh, again, the first Impressionist show is in 1874, and these are some images that we have from the Salon of 1874, just to kind of put us in perspective of uh, what was going on with the establishment and why these artists kind of broke away, if you will. Uh, and that's really what the Impressionists are is just a group of friends uh, and colleagues, if you will, people who knew each other. Again, this is Paris. This is a very uh, smaller art community uh, who just decided that they were kind of done uh, with trying to deal with the salon. Either they were rejected outright or they had had limited success in the salon, uh, and they just kind of wanted a break uh, from trying to deal with the institution. So when we really look at the Impressionists, that's really what they are, is, is a group uh, breaking away from the establishment, if you will, uh, trying to do their own art show and show their own ideas. Now, when we think about the Impressionists, uh, there, there are uh, eight Impressionist shows altogether, and depending on what year uh, the Impressionist show is, uh, you have a different group. We really look at the core, though, uh, of five artists, Renoir, uh, Degas, Monet, Bird Morisseau, and uh, Camille Pizarro. And depending on which year the Impressionist show was, not all of these folks, uh, not all of these five actually showed. Uh, I believe the only one that actually showed in all eight of the Impressionist exhibitions was Camille Pizarro. And he was really kind of this father figure to the group, uh, kind of kept everyone together, if you will. Uh, the staple, as I've often referred to him, uh, of the Impressionist cycle. But again, when we look at the first group, we have our core members, but there's also a very large group of other artists artists that are participating in this, uh, again, kind of pooling these groups together uh, in order to make this show actually functional. And the press, of course, had a field day with it. Uh, they, there was a, a very, very uh, bad press, if you will, written about the event itself. And, of course, this did help their popularity uh, in terms of the fact that they just got their name recognized. But as a whole, the first Impressionist exhibition uh, really was kind of a failure in terms of money. Uh, none of the artists really did that well. I believe Renoir sold a few paintings, but uh, other than that, most of the other work uh, was not well received uh, uh, by the press of the time. And it is, of course, from the Monet painting uh, Impressionist Sunrise that we do get the title uh, written kind of uh, uh, through the guise of, of one of the critics of the time, uh, kind of giving the, the group its name. And again, when we look at them as a group of artists, this is kind of the interesting thing uh, about them as a group. Here's another wonderful little uh, caricature from the time, kind of showing the interest of the public with the art and that type of thing. Uh, each one of them kind of really brings something unique and different to the table. Uh, you can kind of make these broader associations of what Impressionist art is, but uh, I think with each one of the artists you can almost find something that they're doing that greatly breaks against uh, that tradition. What we have is kind of a general guideline is we have a lot of paintings that are usually done outdoors. Uh, we have a lot of paintings that are not uh, finished in the academic sense. The brush strokes are very loose and open. Uh, a large use of color as well. Many of the Impressionists uh, didn't use the color black. It was almost forbidden. Uh, but then we have uh, painters like such as Degas who did uh, use black as well. Um, so again, it, it really does kind of vary. Uh, one of the things that we really do kind of see as a staple uh, is the view of the modern world. And, and again, as I explained in the previous lecture, uh, this is a time period where many different things are actually changing. Uh, here is our Impression Sunrise, as I mentioned earlier, the famous painting by Monet that will lend uh, the name to the group. And again, a lot of what we see is this kind of common thread with them uh, is simply that, that instead of trying to paint uh, these mythological subjects or or kind of moving through the neoclassical ideology uh, in terms of painting, what they really are focusing on uh, is, is the world around them. They, they are looking at contemporary notions of composition, uh, painting contemporary people uh, rather than historical objects or, or historical images 
or the idea of what uh, these historical things might be. Again, uh, they don't have direct proof for a lot of these concepts, so a lot of this is kind of constructed uh, in terms of an imagination. Uh, here from uh, the theater box from Renoir, one of the very famous paintings shown in the Impressionist exhibition of 1874. Uh, this painting uh, was, of course, famous. He sold it for the same amount, I believe, as, as it cost him uh, to pay his rent for a month, as the story goes. Uh, and again, we do see a thick use of black uh, within this. So again, any one of the, the ideas or, or, or uh, rules that they, they kind of put together, you do find uh, credences where they're breaking it. But again, when we look at this, uh, this is the theater box. And, and when we explore uh, the history of Paris, we'll look at this a little bit more uh, during our lecture on Degas. Uh, we kind of notice that this, the theater, is a really integral pro, uh, part of modern Paris at the time. And, and again, they're looking through binoculars as much as anything else. Uh, you'll notice the gentleman isn't really looking at the stage. He's kind of looking off in the, in the direction, uh, a different direction. Bird Morceau uh, is a female artist, and she was uh, shown uh, with the first Impressionist exhibition. Uh, again, when we think about the, selection, the structure of the salon, many female artists kind of had a difficult time uh, with what we would think of as a patriarch-driven uh, kind of concept of art. Uh, so again, when we look at the Impressionist show, one of the, the things that we have uh, is we have female artists. We have people like Bert Morceau who was invited uh, because of her artistic talent, uh, not because of anything else. And again, uh, as we continue and, and we look forward, uh, we see that there are other females who actually join the group as well. Uh, Mary Cassatt is the most notable name. Uh, but Bert Morris, so she was in the first exhibition. She was there from the very beginning. Uh, again, we kind of put her in the context as being the early Impressionist uh, uh, female. Here we have, of course, a, a, a at the races in the country with Edgar Degas. Uh, this is one of the rare Degas paintings because you're actually outdoors when we talk about Degas. We'll look at this a little bit closer. Uh, he had issues with his eyes. But um, Degas, it should be noted, uh, is from an older generation. He's actually good friends uh, with Edward Manet, who is not one of the Impressionists, but kind of a, a lending counsel to the Impressionist uh, and their ideology. Uh, again, Degas would be friends with, with, that, uh, with Manet, so he's from this older group of people, uh, but he's still working within the context uh, of the Impressionist, working within the context of the shows. Uh, and, and from my understanding, he actually causes a lot of difficulty uh, as you kind of continue with the group uh, in terms of trying to be the controlling factor of what's occurring. Uh, so again, we have Edgar Degas, but the person we really look at is kind of being the cornerstone uh, is Camille Pizarro. This is a painting much later than the first Impressionist exhibition. But uh, again, Camille Pizarro is, is much older. He's actually, I believe, even older than Degas. But uh, he's this kind of radical anarchist older gentleman who is really uh, responsible for kind of keeping the group together. Uh, I've often said Camille Pizarro was, was friends with everyone. Uh, and that's kind of true. When you look at the different people within this group, these varying egos, each one of them with a, a wide variety of, of different issues, uh, all coming to the table with their own personalities, I really do think it's Camille Pizarro that is uh, the kind of the one that holds everyone together. Uh, and again, when we look at the Impressionist style, when you look at many of the more famous artists that we speak of, uh, many of them were influenced by Camille Pizarro. Uh, and we have Paul Cezanne. Many people don't know this, but Paul Cezanne did, in, uh, in fact, exhibit with the Impressionists. Uh, he in, exhibited in the first Impressionist show, and I also believe the third Impressionist show. Uh, again, this kind of puts him in, in uh, the time period of, of kind of this earlier generation. Most people associate Cezanne with the post-Impressionist, but uh, he did show in the 1874 exhibition. This is a very, very strange painting. This is... Uh, the modern Olympia, if you will, and if you're familiar with your art history, uh, this is actually a take, if you will, uh, on an Edward Manet painting. 
kind of showing Paul Cezanne's uh, viewpoint, if you will, or Paul Cezanne within the dynamics of the painting himself. Uh, and again, the, the real interesting thing about this painting is that uh, Paul Cezanne has included himself sitting there uh, in the foreground looking at Olympia. Another person we have uh, in the later exhibitions, in the second one, is Gustav Kaibod. Uh, Gustav Kaibod is a, is a, is a wealthy uh, businessman who actually supported uh, the Impressionist in many ways uh, through his finances. He was one of the primary buyers of the, of, of the work of the Impressionist, and he also did exhibit his own work, uh, uh, as I mentioned, in the second Impressionist exhibition leading forward from there. If you're familiar with the Museum Dorsey uh, in France, a large amount of their collection comes directly uh, from Gustav Kaibot's personal purchases of uh, uh, what we think of as the Impressionist work. Again, uh, he's an important figure, if not uh, uh, for his work as an artist, but uh, kind of his perspective on the modern world. But uh, because of his financial support for many of these individuals who uh, I didn't have much uh, uh, else. In 1879, we have Mary Cassatt, uh, our second very famous female artist, joining uh, the, the Impressionist group. Uh, and again, Mary Cassatt is important because, uh, not so much because she's the second uh, female artist, but because she's the first American artist. Mary Cassatt is, of course, uh, from America. And in, and in addition to being uh, highly important to show us a perspective of, of the female perspective during this time period, uh, she's also very much responsible for fostering uh, a lot of the collections that we have in America. Again, this is a wonderful perspective if you see something, uh, uh, an older woman reading a newspaper rather than uh, the neoclassical Venus-esque model uh, of the naked woman standing on the beach or something along those lines. Uh, this kind of shows us a different perspective, a real perspective of how women uh, were within uh, that time period, if you will. Uh, so when we get to the final Impressionist exhibitions, in addition to the Impressionists, we also have uh, the artists that are the Neo-Impressionists. We have Paul Sinek uh, and George Seurat also showing. Uh, we know that Paul, uh, excuse me, George Seurat is good friends with Pizarro, uh, and as we kind of get to the end of this uh, uh, period, Pizarro's style actually kind of goes over to the pointillist style that we would so readily associate with George Seurat. Uh, another name that you'll see uh, on this list is Paul Gauguin. Uh, Paul Gauguin actually shows in the 6th, 7th, and 8th uh, Impressionist exhibitions, and he is kind of this uh, instrumental force in kind of carrying forward uh, to the next generation of artists. Again, we need to remember uh, he works with such people as Vincent van Gogh, who himself never showed uh, with the Impressionist, but actually was and, and did see the 8th Impressionist uh, um, exhibition while he was in Paris. Here we have a portrait of Paul Gauguin, and again, when we think of the work of Paul Gauguin, this is obviously done a little bit later, um, again, uh, this is kind of this the synthesis style moving forward. Uh, we kind of think of him as, as a, a summation, if you will, of a lot of the ideas that we have from the Impressionists, uh, but then he kind of takes those into the next concept, and, and it is with Paul Gauguin, uh, in addition to his friend Emile Bernard, who we didn't have quite enough time to to speak about, uh, where we really do start to see the roots of abstraction, the concept of abstraction in modern art, uh, really start to begin. And again, uh, a lot of this is carried forward uh, from the ideology that we, care, that we have uh, from the Impressionists.